Before we get started, I have to say something. <clears throat> Hopefully my Irish sentiment will get through without being a blubbering idiot. I've been a makeup artist for 35 years. Since I was 13, I wanted to be a makeup artist because of Lon Chaney, the man of a thousand faces. And there are three people that are responsible for my career as a makeup artist. And the first one was Dick Dawson, who, when I was 13, gave me my first makeup case. And I promptly went home and made all the blonde-haired kids have a deeper tan than Cary Grant. <laughs> and the second man was Nick Marcellino, who was head of the makeup department at Universal and gave a 22-year-old punk kid a start as a career and at 22 put me in charge of the makeup for two television movies. And the third man is Carl. He's been my mentor. When I failed my first makeup exam, and I thought the world was against me, and I was griping to the secretary of the makeup department at Warner Brothers, he comes out of the office and says, not hello, not how are you, not what's wrong with you. He says, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, nothing. He said, fine, bring a makeup case and a model. You're going to learn makeup. So I called my friend Craig, who also had not passed the test, and we took our makeup cases, and for the next two weeks, I learned the craft of makeup from this man. It keeps better. Okay. He would take us to lunch every day, refused to let us buy lunch, he said, wait until you get going, and then you can buy me lunch. Well, we passed our test two months later with flying colors, thank you, and then ten months later, we, we had been moved into what we called no man's land, which was group two, and you had to wait until they'd move you up to the journeyman status. And uh, you could sit there for years. Well, this man at a general membership meeting stood up, and he, despite a couple of old grumpy old makeup artists saying, do we really need them? I don't know exactly what Carl said, because by that point my heart was beating so hard they could hear me in Denmark. But what he said was concise, to the point, there goes the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> and we were moved into, unanimously, journeyman status. And I owe that, and my career, to Carl. you've taught me, I've taught everybody coming up. I've tried to follow what you did for me and other people by teaching other people. So everything you taught me, we're still doing. Well, I tell you, Mike, I never have regretted telling anybody anything about makeup that they wanted to learn and trying to show them. And over the years, I didn't miss, I think, one week in all the years that I was doing makeup that I didn't have a job. And it primarily was because the people that were doing the hiring were a lot of the people that I had helped on the way up. So I can only say anybody who is a makeup artist or whatever profession you're in, don't be afraid to show others how to do it. Because in the long run, you're going to get it all back. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit, now that I've got all the Irish cinema out, let's talk uh, a little bit about Sunset Boulevard. How did you get the job? Well, I was at Paramount at the time. I just came over from RKO, where I had been uh, an apprentice and worked a couple of pictures there. And uh, I guess uh, Wally just said, uh, you're going to do it, and they sent me down, and I did it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you remember most about working on the film? Billy had everything going to where he felt what was going on. 
with the people in the show. It was a, it was an attitude that fit the picture and did everything for the picture, made the mood, and everybody who worked on it into that mood, which made it such a success. How was DeMille to work with as an actor? Who? Cecil B. DeMille. How was he to work as an actor? <laughs> <laughs> I, I found the demand to be very, uh, very fair-minded, that's for sure. I remember doing some work on another show for him. Uh, it was the Ten Commandments. Uh, and they had a, a fellow who was supposed to be hit by the jawbone. This man was supposed to be hit in this helmet. So I took the helmet and I put a big crease in it with a, a hatchet and then built up the inside and put hair in it and flesh and one thing and another and showed up the old man and he just kind of smiled and said thank you very much and that was it. And he was very uh, appreciative yeah. of anybody who did something that he liked. I had read that, uh, doing some research on the film, that uh, Wilder, who, who admired DeMille as a director, actually let DeMille write his own dialogue for, for the film. And Henry Wilcoxon, who was an actor, and he's also in the movie, you'll see him. Associate producer. Yeah, he was DeMille's associate producer for eons. He said if you wanted to know what DeMille was like, really like as a human being, watch Sunset Boulevard, because the kindness that you see DeMille express towards Norma Desmond when she comes in to the studio is exactly the way DeMille was. And, uh, I, I just find it interesting that uh, Wilder directed Well, I tell you, the way I saw it, there were many people who always worked on his shows that at some time or other he had befriended or they had done something for him, and he never forgot them. He always had a place for them, and uh, he was a very generous man, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one, I, I tell a story about my dad and how my dad got the job. I don't know if I ever told you this. Yeah. Um, my dad gets a call to go to Paramount Studios for some, it was originally called Can of Beans <clears throat> because they didn't want anybody in Hollywood to know, especially the studio, that it was about Hollywood and it wasn't really a flattering story, so to speak. So Wilder and, and, and uh, his, his co-writer decided, let's call it Can of Beans. That was the, the working title. So my dad's walking down the hallway and he gets lost. He can't find the office. So he's passing some guy in the hallway, little guy with glasses, and he asks him, he says, excuse me, can you help me? I'm lost. He says, where the hell is Billy Wilder's office? And the little guy had a little bit of an accent. He says, oh, you go down here and it's off to the right, you know, around the corner. I gets, OK, thank you. The little guy says, uh, you reading for that new movie of his? And he goes, yeah, you know, he kind of laughs. He says, you know, I've been in the business since 1936, and I never heard of this guy. He must be somebody's relative. And the guy <laughs> laughed with him. Mm -hmm. He said, well, good luck to you. It's down there. My dad goes, my dad, you know where this is going, right? So my dad goes into the office, gives his name to the secretary. There's a few other actors sitting around. The inner office door opens, and the little guy with glasses and the little accent comes out. His name is Billy Wilder, and he says, he's got the job, thank you very much. <laughs> but, but Wilder, uh, he did the same, a similar thing when he cast uh, Nancy Olson as Betty Schaefer in that she never did a test or never did anything, and he just hired her on a gut reaction, and of course, it was one of her best pieces of work. But, uh, and originally, I had read they wanted Mae West, and she turned it down. And they offered it to Mary Pickford, but she wanted it to center around the Norma Desmond character, so Wilder backed off. Then they thought about Paula Negri, who was an old silent screen star, who had a very heavy accent, and the movie was a little too close to the bone, so I think Wilder walked away, and then he went to Gloria Swanson. But they wanted Swanson to test for the film. And Swanson said, in so many words, I practically helped build that studio. I'm not doing a test. <laughs> and George Cukor told her, if you don't do a test, I will personally shoot you. <laughs> and Alan Dewan and director Mickey Nealon and William Powell and Clifton Webb also told her, 
you got to do this movie. So she did the test. And you you were you, you were you were saying that you would work with her before also or after no, this? No, after after and we did a series. How was she to work with as an actress? Just great. Just great. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun with her. She was a wonderful, cheerful, uh, giving human being. Yeah. And uh, I guess that's the way the old Hollywood people were, they'd help each other out. But she was that way and she was when I worked with her, actually, I'll tell you, she was beautiful. She actually was beautiful and, very, and looked very young. And uh, I can't see how she didn't attract much more than she did. Yeah.